I want people to just actually be, and these are extreme words, but like genuine fans and fall in love with me and like those levels of relationships. And I think for me, at least if I'm trying to push to an agency, it just ruins that like connection because there's something there that I want out of you. You can feel it, you can taste it, right? We are live for another episode of Agency Growth Engine, and I'm super excited about our guest today. But before we jump into that, please go leave us a quick review. We need your reviews. We have thousands of listeners, but we only have like 10, 20 reviews on anywhere you listen. It doesn't matter if it's on YouTube or if it's on Apple or Spotify. Just go leave a quick review. And I'm here with my friend Hayden. He is the CEO at Cash In Marketing. And uh, I'm really, really excited about this because I haven't shared you shared this story with you, yet, um, Hayden. But when I early, like right after COVID, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try to get on social media. I just want to see if I can figure it out. So, and I decided to get on TikTok because a lot of the dental world isn't on TikTok. So I knew I could kind of mm. just rift on whatever without it ca causing brand confusion or anything like that. So I came over on TikTok and I, I set a goal. I was just like, I'm just going to post three times a day. I don't care how stupid I feel or how stupid it looks. Or even if I'm just like, hey, this is video number three for today. I just promised myself that I'm going to do this. And slowly over mm -hmm. time, I started to grow. And as I was growing, I was watching your videos. And I was like, someday, I'm going to talk to him. And eventually, one of my videos <laughs> like kind of took off a little bit. And you commented on it. And I was like, OK, that's step number one. Step number two now mm -hmm. is like, how do I get back in front of I him? Think, I think I remember what video it was, too. I think it was the one where you were talking about you had to choose between like losing a massive client um, and because they wanted you on the account or you were going to leave the account and lose them. And I thought that was such a powerful video. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a, that video got a lot of negative attention. There was a lot of people in the comments <laughs> that were like, you're an idiot. That was like mm -hmm. this much MRR. It was like an $80,000 a month account. <laughs> and they're like, you don't have an yeah. hour. You think you're above an hour. And I was like, well, guys, it's like, do you not see, I'm trying to build something a little bit bigger than that. Like my goal, mm -hmm. my vision's beyond that and i have to take i have to take this step i can't be an account manager and grow as a ceo the way i want to but to some people they were like hey this is really really insightful and i'm going through this right now so very polarizing Powerful. topic yeah. but uh excited to talk to you today man how how have how have you been going how's the agency going how is the school going what's going on with your life right now yeah so thank you very much for the intro my name's hayden cashin and as gary said i uh, run cashin marketing and i run a uh, marketing education school called the modern marketing certificate i've been running cashin marketing since the beginning of 2019 and the modern marketing certificate we just ran our first cohort in may uh, it was a three-month cohort so it ended uh, around august and that business we kind of started thinking about it back about a year, a year ago today. So about October last year. Um, and essentially, yeah, both businesses, both businesses are going well at cash and marketing. We just focus on running paid ads for clients. Um, it's something I've personally been doing since 2017, something I'm still deeply passionate about. I've always been infatuated with the fact that you can see all the data all the way down to the specific ad and then broken up by the audience and then, you know, pulled together at the high level objective as well. And I've always found that was such so fascinating um, because now there was so much less um, subjective opinions, right? It was all data driven and you could just look at the things that were working and pull insights from them and dive deeper in them. And, and I thought it was like a game and you could see your, your ROI on the back end and, and it was a real game because you were making real money. And so I've always been infatuated by that. And then um, funny enough, the reason we started the school and this is actually a crazy, like, uh, I believe in the universe is, is what I like to say a lot. And this is a crazy moment. So with the school um, back in 2017, I had taken a, cert a certification program to get my foot into the industry. Um, and I was a big fan of that program. And I was close to the people who ran it. And I was always telling them they should scale it, um, especially with COVID. It then moved online. And I was like, you should really scale it now. Um, but for whatever reason, they decided not to. And last year, um, I think August... 16th is when I got an, uh, an email from them and everyone who graduated their certificate got an email that said, thank you so much for your support. Um, but we are shutting this program down. And right away, the light bulb kind of went off in my head of like, really, like, I always love this business. Why don't I look at taking it over? And there's, there's a whole story around it um, of how I met the, the, the person who's now the co-founder of the business with me. And that's very, you know, he literally like, 
pulled up beside me randomly on like a residential street and we just started like it's 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 really crazy um but the craziest universal moment is that i got that email on august 16th and i didn't realize this until five days before august 16th this year but our final project of our first cohort was due on august 16th so a year to getting that email it kind of blew my mind um but yeah both businesses are, are going really well and i'm truthfully more passionate about the school side of things because Mm -hmm. I think um, I really think that's where the puck's going in the sense of traditional institutions. I'm not a believer that they're going to die or any of that stuff, but I do think there will be a lot more alternatives to them and people will be a lot more open-minded to them over the next 10, 20 years as we see the value of these institutions, what they're providing in the marketplace. And so I actually just believe in this business so much more because I think it's at a perfect cross section uh, from a timing standpoint. Yeah, I, I love that, and um, I really want to dive into that in a moment. But w- one one of the things I want to talk to you about before we jump back to the school is how you started your agency. So everybody really struggles with this. Mm-hmm. Where cool story. it's like, man, how do I how do I do this? I want to do it, and I think this is going to be bigger and bigger. Yeah. And the reason I think this is because like 75% of kids want to be YouTubers or something like that right now. And so these kids are all going to <laughs> yeah. come out into the real world and try to be YouTubers. And that's not possible. You can't have mm-hmm. more influencers than people being influenced. It's just not possible. And so what's going to happen is, is people are going to have to pivot. And the natural next step after you figure out how to get into a- attention or you, you're interested in getting attention, but you couldn't do it, is to help other people get that attention if you understand it. And so yeah. I think there's going to be more and more niche marketing companies oh and more and more niche opportunities to serve. And so, and I think that feeds into your school in a moment, but I want to talk about how you started into the industry and how you kind of made that break in. Yeah. And while you were saying that, I was kind of like trying to analyze back to what the real insight is. And for my story, personally, it was actually just based on passion. Um, And and it's not what you think, where you think I'm going to go with it. So what actually happened is I took the certificate uh, in 2017 and I got an internship. What was the certificate in... exactly? Like, what skill set was it? Was it just ads? No, no, no. Uh, it was like only one week of ads. There's there was ten weeks, and it was called the digital marketing certificate. Okay. Week one was like planning. Week two was like mobile app optimization, <laughs> like app store optimization. Then Google Analytics. Then e-commerce. Like it was it was all over the map. And it was basically to teach you the the foundation of digital marketing. And it was actually for grad students, which is another weird universal fact is I was a third year student. I wasn't even close to being a grad student. And I got this email by accident and just went after it. And it ended up working out. But anyway, took the certificate, got a job working for a sports organization where basically um, they allowed me to run paid ads and try to drive ticket sales. And it, it was once again, like such a perfectly timed thing because in 2017, they were so focused on traditional media of TV, radio, all this type of stuff. It's, it's, it's a CFL team, so it's a pretty big team here. And they basically had like a percentage of, of their budget was to ads, but they didn't even care. They were like, hey, intern, please go run this. Kind of like, like just, we have to do this, us. right? Because our budget had said that we had to spend 1% on digital ads. So here, go do this intern. Exactly. And it was a blessing, right? Because what's what's the hardest part when it comes to learning digital ads is no one wants to give you money to learn. <laughs> So I fell into this like lucky spot where I was given like enough budget to really do a bit of damage. And then I could just go YouTube all these strategies and like start to test things. And no one really bugged me. I was just like in my corner doing my thing. Um, And so that happened. And and what really happened with me is I was really passionate about it. So I would go home and I would Google it and I would YouTube and I would come back and I would like apply it and I'd be trying to optimize it. And I would literally just be obsessed with like learning it. Um, and so because of that, I got pretty good pretty quickly. And I was seeing the ROI on the back end. Um, and they didn't really care about it because it was small numbers to them. But the multiple, if you're looking at it, was crazy. And it was kind of blowing my mind. Um, and so as fate would have it, I went golfing with my dad and his friend. And I was talking to his friend. And his friend um, is a coach for a number of individuals. Very successful coach, the C-suite at Shopify and, and all these different things. But he was talking to me and asked me what I'm up to. And I'm like, hey, I'm running ads for uh, the sports team. And he was like, oh, no way. One of my clients is a restaurant owner and they just opened up a second location. They're overwhelmed with their marketing on the second location. I could introduce you. Maybe you could get a little bit of side money and and help them with the marketing there. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. 
Um, and that ended up being my first two clients, um, just kind of luck like that. I didn't, I wasn't even looking for it and they're still clients to this day, which is, which is fun. Um, but anyway, I was working that on the side and then I ended up getting a job at an agency uh, in Montreal, which is two hours from Ottawa where I live. And I was leading a project with, um, uh, a television network, helping ship them from TV first to web and social first. And I had a ton of success there and I would document it, um, on my Instagram story. And so what ended up happening is, is a lot more people started reaching out and being like, Hey, I have this. Can you help me? I have this. Can you help me? I have this. Can you help me? And I actually got to a point where logically the numbers kind of made sense for me to leave my job. And I was really happy at my job. I was making good money at my job for the stage of life I was at. And I was learning a lot, working on a big project. Um, but I ran the numbers and I was like, okay, if I quit this job, I'll get 40 hours back. Um, and my income will, will go down. But if I take on these three new opportunities, I think I can get to like 50%, 60% of the income I used to be at. And then, um, but I'll have so much room to scale past it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so logically it kind of lined up to make sense to me. And, and I, at the end of the day, I was like, I was young. So I was like, yeah, I got where, nothing to lose. It's almost like got to the, the point day, where you go, would be stupid if you didn't do it. Right. I would always wonder what if, and that's a common theme in my life is I would rather fail than wonder what if. Um, and so that's really how cash and marketing started was, was it just logically made sense to go in that direction? And that's why I come back to saying it's actually passion. I just really yeah. love doing it. And, and, and I told people about it through my Instagram story. And because of that opportunities came to me that then allowed me to do it. I didn't like yeah. make a conscious decision one day to just make an agency. Yeah. Yeah. So for all the people out there, I mean, the roadmap, if you're just like, man, I really want to do this, go get a job related to it go execute on that job, talk about it say, Hey, I'm working on this. Now, part mm -hmm. of that, Hayden, that, that you didn't mention, but I think is really important is you have to be vulnerable in your presentation. And I've seen you do this before on social media where you were like, Hey, I'm going to start a TikTok and I'm going to hit like a million followers in like, you know, in a year or six months or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you're like, Hey, I didn't hit it in yeah. six months, but I hit this and it's better than nothing. And you've reframed it. Right. Mm -hmm. But most people are scared to uh -huh. do that. They're scared to be vulnerable yep. and say, Hey, I'm working on this thing. It's really cool. It's working. And that vulnerability, what most people take as, if I say this, people are going to take it as weakness or I failed. What really happens is people yep. go, that's really cool. This guy's relatable. I, you know, I can, I, I want to help him. I want to work with him. And it's the opposite of what the story that we tell ourselves in our head. Is that, is, is that accurate for you? 100%. And it's so funny before we started this interview, the one thing I had in my head to tell you that I'm really impressed with is how you've almost, I don't know if you've shifted how you brand yourself on social or just opened up another pillar, but you're very, um, you know, vulnerable and very honest and very open on social about the realities of your life. Even though, you know, you run this company, you don't pretend like you're the best and you know, like you really show all sides of you. And I think that is so powerful. Um, and I think that leads back into here because my mindset, so the goal was a hundred thousand followers in 30 days which from day one, I didn't. So when I started, I had no idea about TikTok. Like I didn't know what would happen. I've obviously yeah. seen other accounts and stuff, yeah. but I really didn't know like how easy it was. And so I just set that goal. But in my mind, I was like, okay, if I hit it, great. We look awesome. But if I don't even better, because okay. then I get to, but, <laughs> but, but even listen to this, but then I get to um, go through the trials and tribulations to eventually get there. I knew I wouldn't give up. And I knew it one day I would get there. And then I tell the story of becoming mm -hmm. and inspire others that when we hit walls, we keep going and actually failing was the best thing that ever happened. And you, you can start to see these titles come out, right? So from day one, I look at it like that and it's a win-win. And even in my mind, actually better if it fails because the story's better. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it, to your point, I think old media for, I'm, I'm 40 years old. So when I was younger, when I was 20, 21, 22 everything was curated perfectly. Like if you had a typo in something, you were getting, you could get fired <laughs> yeah. for that. Like re releasing an ad with a typo in it. If you had the wrong phone yep. number on something, like you were done. Um, uh, yep. People like, and everything was perfect. Like you always used the, the certain kinds of models and all of your pictures because everything had to be perfect. Everything had to be that perfect end result. There was no, let's be vulnerable in our marketing. There was no such thing of that. Like it didn't, it didn't exist. Now with social media and now with TikTok, 
the vulnerable side comes out. Now, sometimes it goes too far. Like, the, I don't know if you, did you see the crying CEO thing? I know exactly like, who he took. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind of, I mean, if you wanted eyeballs, it was successful, but if you wanted like a grip of backlash too with it, like it was unsuccessful. So it depends on your, your level of success there, but like you can go too far with the whole vulnerability thing, but the, um, the, the end result is now with marketing, marketing is about like, Hey, let's just be transparent and let's show what the real, like how we really make the sausage. And I think that's fascinating because it, it helps on a couple different levels. Number one, like if you're really thinking about starting an agency, let me tell you why you might not like it. <laughs> let, let, instead of just being like, you should start an agency, right? And then number yeah. two is this is like the struggle that you're going to deal with once you have what you deem as success. And I think a lot of depression in our day and age, there's so many more people depressed than when I was 20 years old, 20 years ago. They're like, there's a lot more depression. And I think a lot of that has to do with, we think the outcome is going to fix our problems, but in reality, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. It just makes it more complex, more, more difficult to work through. Uh, it adds more problems on top of problems. And so I, I just think that working through those things really helps people in an honest way. And um, again, you've done a really, really good job of that too. And I appreciate the compliment on it. Like I really actively try to go through and say, what am I struggling with? How can I frame this? How can I get through that? And that story um, resonates with people. It does a lot yeah. better than, um, than, than it does. Now, one of the things I want to ask you is how, so you started TikTok, you had no idea what it was going to bring, but I ha I've heard you make videos that now it drives a lot of leads for you. Yeah. And to be honest, it's driving a lot less now, but the thing about my content is it's really not lead based. Like if you look at my content, very rarely do I say that I run an agency and I don't know, maybe five times to 10 times I've mentioned the modern marketing certificate in my content. And so I always say like, I would argue like 95% of my followers don't even know I run an agency. They just think I'm like a marketing guy and like, they don't know anything past that. And so, you know, in the past, I've actually made a piece of content. That's literally like, Hey, I want uh, physiotherapy clinics. Um, if you're a physiotherapy clinic, you know, just go to my website and message me. And overnight I got two clients. And so I know it works if I want it to, but for me, I actually look at TikTok as building Hayden cash in and more importantly, not even cash in marketing, just cash in the brand, mm -hmm. right? For things like this in the future, the cash and candle and cash and clothing and all these different verticals. Exactly. Right. It's a lot deeper to me than driving leads to my marketing agency. Mm -hmm. I want people to just actually be, and these are extreme words, but like genuine fans and fall in love with me and like those levels of relationships. And I think for me, at least if I'm trying to push to an agency, it just ruins that like connection because there's yeah. something there that I want out of you. You can yeah. feel it. You can taste it. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. And so for me, that's actually not the goal of my TikTok. It's really to make, in my opinion, what I'm trying to do is make myself a thought leader in the marketing space mm. simply. Yeah. And I will leverage that for the rest of my life. Yeah. Because it creates a, a, a multi purpose for whatever you want to do in the future. Maybe you want to buy a sports team or maybe you want to, whatever you want to do, you'll it'll maybe run for a political office, right? Like doesn't matter what you want to do. You'll be able to leverage it. I'll give you a great example. Like one of the reasons we thought marketing, modern marketing was a good idea and did that the certificate program was because I started gaining traction on TikTok, And I was like, wow, 99.9% .9 of these followers don't own businesses. Yeah. So I can't even directly transact them but I'm sure a high percentage of them want to learn more about marketing. So I was like, I have a captive audience right now and I don't have a B2C product. And so we opened up modern marketing and we got lots of business by just opening that floodgate. And that was because there was pent up leverage. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really cool. So, so you, I love your journey. I love where you're at right now. Um, what let's jump into the school. So where do you see the school? What's your vision for the school? Like in two, three years, if I followed up with you in full transparency, I've used the school. I've had some of my team members go through the school. They loved it. They learned a lot from it. They had instantly had skill sets that they could apply. I don't know where else I could have sent right. them to just get a quick hit like that. Like I didn't want them to go to school for four years for sure. Right. Um, I wanted yeah. them to learn a very specific skill set, and they went and did that. So, what, mm -hmm. like, what's your vision for this school? 
Yeah, so I basically see it as the place you go to learn the most up-to-date skills in digital marketing. So right now, the skills that are being taught is just high-level planning. So overarching, looking at the whole landscape and planning for it. Um, landing pages, Facebook organic, Facebook paid, Google organic, Google paid, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok organic and paid, email marketing. So those are kind of the facets right now that we're teaching. And we've broken it down into um, three different almost tiers of products. So you have the modern marketing certificate where you actually get a certificate and we actually give you job interviews with, with our partners. Um, and that's an 11 week program. Currently we will be making changes to cohort two, but the one that we just did, it was 18 hours a week for 11 weeks. So it was about 200 hours total. So heavy time commitment. Um, it's evenings and weekends. So it's outside of a nine to five schedule. And basically the way we look at it is for a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time, you can yeah. kind of learn what you would learn in a traditional institution, but we actually pair you up with the job opportunities on the back end. And at the end of the day, it's really in our best interest to make sure you get jobs because yeah. that's the leverage to get the next cohort. Right. And so that's kind of like the grand product at the top product two, which um, we're rolling out officially very shortly is like the DIY get a job. So what it is, is, is you get all the recordings, you get all the slides, you get all the items that you need to complete the deliverables. You get a modified final project that basically you can do on your own and grade yourself. Um, and then you actually get this thing called the job masterclass, which shows you how to build your resume and incorporate the modern marketing certificate, shows you how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, shows you how to then go on LinkedIn and smartly start connecting, shows you how to um, prepare for interviews, shows you how to follow up after interviews. So basically teaches you the skills you need and then gives you all the tools to go get the jobs yourself. I'm in love with this product because basically when someone buys, this. we're hands off. And then the third tier is basically a la carte modules. So you can buy just TikTok or you can buy just Facebook ads That's or awesome. whatever. And so maybe if you're an agency or if you're someone who just wants a certain skill, you can do that. So those are kind of the tiers we're looking at. And one other thing I'll add to it is like, I live in a province called Ontario here in Canada. And so based on how our, our course is structured, we actually have to be a, uh, we have to register as a private career college and that's quite a long process. And so over the short term now, we're really focused on the e-commerce product and just selling the e-commerce model. And it reminds me a lot of COVID when, when businesses got hit and they had the their main product and then they had to shift to online. Yeah. So I'm really excited because we're going to be focused on really getting our e-commerce rolling now. And then once the career college stuff is all set up, then we can have both, but we'll have a real understanding of both. That's so awesome. I, I love that. And I love the number two product. And here's why. My kids go to business math. Have you ever heard of business math? Do you guys have that up there in Canada? Like, is it called that? No, I don't think so. Okay. So business math is just like, or, or, or consumer math, people call it different things, but basically it's like, here's how to give change. And here's how to like actually use math in the real world. Like as you interact in the real world, one of the things that they do in there cool. that that's, that's interesting is that they teach you how to balance your checkbook. And I tell my kids, even when okay. I was a kid, I'm just like, guys, you don't yeah. like, it literally doesn't matter. Just do it because the school's telling you to do it, but it literally don't need that. Like it's, I don't write yeah. checks at all. I don't have checks for anything. Mm -hmm. I do everything, either digital checks and, and goes up into a software or, or I okay, use a okay. debit card. Right. So I thought you're using that as like an analogy of like balance, like balance here, but you meant actual checks. Yeah. Like hard, hard copy, <laughs> write crazy. on a check, sign it, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. take it out and then deduct it. So that way, you know how much money is going to be in your bank account. So here's the interesting yeah. thing though. Schools move really, really slow, right? The educational process moves slow. So then you'll go online and go to a resume class or you'll go to college and they'll teach you how to write a resume, but it's from like 20 years ago and they don't work in LinkedIn, which is like, you lose all the leverage, you lose all the power. And so I love that you can build something and that you're already building in how to change it as it changes. And you're already thinking through here, this is good for this year, but next year's courses are going to be totally different. That not only makes yep. you super relevant, but it also helps you continue to build what you guys are going to build in the future. And I, I just think that's an awesome idea the way you frame that. Yeah, I love it. I'll share something with you on kind of that note as well is like one of the advantages that we want to be competitive on is like the industry moves so quickly. And so when we get up to full force, we want to be doing a cohort every quarter. So essentially 
you know, we'll have our e-commerce product, but four months later, it'll be replaced with the most up-to-date information. Same topic, but most up-to-date. So would you like have somebody like me who has like, we have a hundred team members. So I'm like, Hey, I want my ads people to go through this every quarter. So So here's where I'm getting at. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, this is what we'll have in general, but then we're looking at a B2B subscription model where it's like, as an agency owner, you could just pay the subscription cost and you could have um, X amount of accounts. And basically, you know, your ads people could have access to the content at all times. And when it's updated, they just already have access to the updated information. Um, And that's kind of like V3 of the company once the cohorts are running quarterly and just constantly updating. How big do you think this can uh, get? But that's something we're thinking about like as well. Like how big, do, like what's your, like how do you, the from yeah. a framework, like, so we, like funny enough, 100 like, people in class, 500 people, 1,000 people, what are you thinking? Truthfully, like I don't know if I want the class sizes to be over 50, but I'm not opposed to having class A, B, C, D all running alongside each other with different teachers teaching each of it or something along those lines. Um, yeah, because uh, a live class have, with 100 people would be too much, right? bit ridiculous right and so um i think 50 is like a a high amount to be honest and maybe like three or four teaching assistants within that class you know broken up to help each group almost as we separate them but um me and my partner we were working on this book together no not that we're writing it we're reading it together called start at the end have you heard of it Mm -hmm. gary yeah it's really good right and so we're going through all the worksheets together and aligning our vision because this is what i told him is like we could both have visions and they could actually both be quite successful. But if we're not aligned on the vision, we're going to conflict and it's going to crash. And so we need a tool that's going to help us actually articulate our vision and then compare them and then agree. Hmm. And so we've been doing start at the end together. And like the first thing you do is that you set um, the date you want to, if you want to exit the date, you want to exit the amount you want to exit for um, your internal vision and then your customer focused vision. Right. And then, and then you start to uh, build out all your business assets, timeline it and all this other stuff. But so we have clarity at the top of exactly what we want to accomplish. And of course, nothing ever goes fully according to plan, but, yeah, but um, that's uh, that's how you start moving in that direction. Yeah. That's the level of planning we're at for sure. That's awesome. Okay. So i um, going to change total gears on you here. Cause I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm Still really it. interested in your opinion on this. So I went online yesterday and I needed a photo. I needed a photo of rockets with people in business suits underneath it. I just wanted to see if I can get my hands on a picture <laughs> like that and not pay anything for it. So I hopped on one of those AI, yeah. one of those AI like Dolly type things. It wasn't Dolly, but it was one of those. And I typed in rockets with business people underneath it. And I got a picture and I posted it everywhere. I used it. I said, Hey, I made this through AI, but then I, it's, it got me to start to think, right? So it's like someday, we're going to be able to get whatever picture we need instantly. And it's going to pull from other um, products, right? So the AI, what it does is it goes and pulls from all these copyrighted things and it makes its own version of it. And eventually it'll be able to make real people that look like real photos, all that kind of stuff. Then I started to think, and okay, well then I'm going to be able to go to this AI thing and eventually and be like, I want to make a business book, but I want to make a business book off of, you know, these 12 different business books or this subject and I want you to pull all the most relevant information and then I just order it and it'll all be original content, right? Like it's, I, it, there's no copyright on it because it's just a machine grabbing it from everywhere. And so I, in the future, I see people being able to get whatever information they want to a whole nother level, right? Like whatever picture they want, whatever information they want and curate it in a way that they want it. And a machine's going to do that. It's very similar to like websites. Now it's much easier to build a website than it was 20 years ago. It's going to be easier sure. to build um, a code and app than it was, you know, it's going to just get easier and easier and easier to code. Eventually, I think there's going to be just like a lot of machines doing things. One of the things that we're working on is having an app that runs all the marketing for us. So we have all the information that rolls up into this application and then it tells us what to do from that. Now we're training it right now, but it's it's helping us go, oh, this company is not answering their phones, you should cut back on their marketing spend. Someone needs to notify them to hire somebody in the office so they can answer more of their phone calls, right? And it's yeah. so it's just working through that process. So I see like in the future where marketers are going to have to be more niche, more narrowed down. And I think that's what you're doing, right? You're like passionate about, you 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 started as running ads, then you ran ads for people. 
and then you ran ads for multiple people and now you're teaching other people how to run ads because that's what you're passionate about. So it's just, you keep scaling the opportunity. Sure, how, yeah. like, what is your, that's my future. Like how I see it, like how do you, what is your future? And I might be totally wrong, but what does your future look like? You know, a lot about social media, you know, a ton about running ads, you know how to run a marketing agency, you're running a successful school. What are you seeing like 10, 20 years down the road of how this is all going to develop? Yeah, like it's it's a massive question for starters. And and I definitely, you know, I'm just going to spitball. Like I don't yeah. have like a very clear thought of like what I believe, but I do think about it in the ad landscape for sure, because everything to optimize your advertising, as far as I can tell, can really be done by a machine one day. Like it's really yeah. just analyzing data and making decisions. Um, the part I don't know like I'm sure one day maybe, but the part I struggle to see at least in the shorter term is once you have the insights of what's working, how do you take that and then translate that to the creative concept? I think that to a certain extent is, is more of a human brain thing than just a machine thing. Like, how do you like be like, okay, these are the 12 insights. What video do we shoot? Right. Like, cause, cause the thing about a video is it's unlimited variables. Like you could literally mm -hmm. come up with anything. And so I think syn synthesizing data and turning that into art, um, is something, I don't know if a machine will be able to figure that out in the next 10, 20, in, in my opinion, cause at least from what I, I guess, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, but that's where I do see like, that'll continue to be a thing. Um, but I do think like ads, ads will be, um, systemized. But at the end of the day, truthfully, Gary, I don't really think too far ahead. I'm really not that type of person that like worries about 10 years from now. I just know like by the time that happens, there'll be other things. Like think about NFTs, block, like there's so much, it's, 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 always, it's always being solved and emerging, solved and emerging, solved. Yep. It's it just evolution, right? Yep. And so I don't even worry about it because I know there'll be opportunity elsewhere and I'm, and I'm ready to you know, go after that. So what's your next big opportunity that you're thinking that's going to uh, pop out of like the next thing that you're evolving into? For me, it is modern marketing certificate. Like I think what I've found in cash and marketing is I don't actually love day-to-day -day operations. I'm the Most type of person that <laughs> I can really look right. And I, I can look high level and I really have the vision and I really understand what to do but I get so bored with the execution of it daily, right? And so with modern marketing, I actually was able to structure it in a much smarter way that now that I have that self-awareness from the first company, I know how I am. And so the person who's my partner is actually the active CEO of the company. And I'm much more, you know, leveraging my network. Um, I'm the, the marketing person behind it. So I understand core structure, um, I know how to get the ads, you know, getting the yep. leads in and he's a natural salesperson. So we do compliment each other like that, but going forward, the company will be day-to-day -day ran by them and I'll be more, much more in an advisory role and a strategic role. Um, and so I, I'm really just excited about modern marketing. I'm not looking at like the next opportunity past that currently, but I also do think I could build um, a massive personal brand across all channels if I, if I just focused on it, because I do think something I'm very strong at is simplifying complexity and making everyday normal people understand something that other people um, struggle to communicate to them. And so I think simply off that skill set, I'm able to build a personal brand. And so that's something that I do see um, in my cards, but right now I'm just so heads down on the certificate. Yeah. Uh, to your point earlier about being self-aware about what you like and don't like, I think that's so important. And one thing that I learned, like a framework for that is in every company, eventually you have to have somebody who makes it up. And initially you do all three of these, but you have to have somebody who makes it up. That's the visionary. Like, oh, I should do a school. That's a visionary. You got to make something up out of nowhere. Then you have to have somebody who makes it real. Those, that's an executor. Mm -hmm. And, and yep. usually the person who can make it up can make it real in some sense, especially at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then yep. there's, then you have to make it recurring. And that's the mm -hmm. part that people don't realize the nuance between those two. And they get stuck in between number two and number three. 
And then they're like, I hate my job. I hate, or I hate this company <laughs> yeah, that yeah, I yeah. built and I'm burnt out. And it's it, the reason why is because they're outside their natural zone. The other thing that I realized, I thought nobody would love to make it recurring. When I learned this, I was like, oh, how am I going to find these people? There's actually, yeah. I, and I d- discredited my skill set, which is the vision. So I was like, yeah, everybody just sees into the future like this. And then I came to realize most don't, most don't look like way into the future or even a year into mm-hmm. the future. And because it just, it, I don't know why, that's just the way that it works. And there's a lot of people who love making things recurring and the security in it and just the day to day of just yeah. knowing what to expect from their job. And once I figured that out, like, oh, we're all wired, wired differently and you can yeah. bring in that support. It, it changed my life inside of my business because now I'm just like on the hunt for cool. Here's what I'm good at. What do you guys get at? Let's, let's partner together and figure out how to execute this at a high level. So I think that's really cool that you were figured that out so early on. It took me like 10 years to figure that out. And it's fun talking to you, right? Because I feel like you're someone who's, who's gone through what I'm going through. And so to hear you say stuff like that, it makes so much sense to me. Right. And it's, 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 it's important because it's something that I may think in my head, but to have someone who's actually done it and lived it and then regurgitate, you know, along the lines of where I, what I'm thinking as well, it just like allows me to go so much quicker because I have certainty in my thought. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It's, it, it's interesting how, um, getting alignment on someone, even if they're just like a little bit ahead of you or a little bit behind you and they're like, Hey, I figured this thing out. And it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. I was kind of thinking that and it, it helps you move faster. Here's another one that I would love to pick your brain on. So, yeah. and I think this is true because I've, it was true for me, but I, I would love your thoughts on it. So I think that the ladder for a business owner goes like this. You become an expert and after you at whatever the thing is, right. It doesn't matter if it's ads or social media yeah. or whatever the thing is you, you have to become an expert at that thing. Then you become an entrepreneur is the next skill set that you have to learn. So at first it's just like, mm-hmm. I just need accounts, but now it's like, how do I make this profitable? And how do I actually, how do I, <laughs> how do I deliver this on a consistent basis? Right. You have to really, how do I market myself? I need more leads. So now you're, you went from expert to entrepreneur. And then the next one is how to be a leader. And what I struggled with is I didn't realize that I, I was uh, a leader was separate from being the entrepreneur. I thought being the entrepreneur was being the leader. So I'm just like, come on guys, aren't you guys excited? Like me? And I was like, (laughs) they're like, no, we're not. And we're not following you because that's stupid. And you didn't, you structured the bonus system, like some aggressive wall street person where we're not (laughs) interested in that. We're more, because that's how I wanted it. Right. I'm like, massive upside, massive opportunities. And they're like, no, we want, we want security. We want yeah. consistency. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I realized actually right after COVID, the business grew like crazy, which it was like every entrepreneurial dream that I had was fulfilled. I literally exceeded every one of them, but I, like it was the most painful process in the world. Cause I went from having a team of 15 to a team of like 60, 70. And I had no idea what I was doing. Like I, I literally, I didn't have, and I also didn't have, usually that gro- growth would happen over like two or three years. So it's kind of like, Hey, I'm going to learn this along the way. It, it happened in like under 12 months. Yeah. And so I didn't learn it. I didn't learn the CEO skills. I didn't learn huh. a lot of the things I needed to learn. And I, I literally had to like stop everything and go learn it. It yeah. was really painful. But anyway, so the expert. Can I ask you a question quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your biggest weakness currently that you need to fix? based on what now, how that's happened. Yeah. So my biggest weakness that I need to fix right now is that my problem is, is I oversimplify things. Mm. I say how, and how easy things are. And I am so fast to move. You can give me any, you, you and I could right now spend the next 20 minutes. I bet you we could develop a company and launch it in like the next week. Right. Which is awesome because we're just like, yeah, this opportunity, this happens. There's, so, the, there's, <laughs> there's an abundance of opportunities. The problem is is how are you going to execute those and, and then make it recurring again? We, then you have to, cause I'm going to get bored of it in like six months. Right. And so then I'm going to be like, well, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? So mm. for me, a lot of times in, in leading a company, it's keeping my mouth shut and allowing people to develop through their thought process on things that I already find boring mm. and getting, uh, the, uh, getting the team aligned horizontally. So Vertically, we figured out the vertical communication. So as we built out departments, we 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 got the uh, the departments to be able to uh, communicate in those departments up to leadership, 
but then now we're working on getting those departments to communicate horizontally between each other towards a common goal. And if I come in and I say, well, what about this guys? You guys want to do this? This sounds like fun. (laughs) And I can sell it, right? Like, cause I will be so passionate about it and so excited. I can get buy-in and the team will be like, yeah, that sounds fun. It'll, but it will wreak havoc. So it's like Mm. slowing down, being quiet, and then how I've solved that a little bit, I'm still learning, is I have playgrounds that I can sandboxes that I can go play in and do whatever I want. And it doesn't cause disruption in the company because I, yeah. I need that outlet. Like I need to go uh, try new things and do new things. I just can't do it inside the company because it disrupts it too much. Do you find your content one of those? It was for a little bit. I'm already kind of like I got I figured out how to like shoot a video in my car, not edit it. <laughs> get 50,000 views, do it in between work. You know what I mean? So I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. I can, I can do that. Like, and then, then, then I was like, now how do I scale it? Cause I don't want to do mm. that anymore. I don't want to vi- film it, edit it. Course, I want some, yeah. I want somebody else to do all of it. So podcasting, this is actually, I'll ask your advice on this. So I'm on TikTok right now. And like, I went from like doing pretty well. I got to the place where I was posting one video today and most of the time they were doing pretty good. And I had a lot of growth on my channel. Then I was like, okay, I'm bored. So now I want to do podcasts and have those podcasts cut up, which is a totally different format. None of my followers are there for that content, right? And and I'm just now starting to get traction. I had a video do like on TikTok, like 1700 views today um, in like the first day that it went up, which I haven't, doesn't sound like a lot, but like all my videos have been getting like 20 views, 50 views. So like, I'm trying to figure out how do I take this content that you and I are doing right now, natural because yeah. this is natural for me and slice it up into smaller edits and then keep them growing. Um, I've actually talked to your guy, uh, um, Jamie yep. and deep over there. Yep. They're really good at that. And like had them like give me feedback and like walk me through some things. So what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Like it's funny. Me and Jamie have this conversation because Jamie, uh, the coin term that we say is he sees content and I do as well. I can look at a podcast and be like, Oh, that's it right there. Um, and I, and what me and Jamie talk about is you can hire people who can edit banger clips, but if they don't see the moment that's going to catch fire on TikTok, if they don't strategically understand why, um, I don't even know how to train that, to be honest. I think that's a sense. And so that's what I would tell Jamie, um, when we have these conversations is like, you either have to find someone that kind of has the eye you have and have them oversee teams. Because I do think it's kind of hard to find those people that are also the editor as well. You know, that's like even rarer. And so that's the hardest part, in my opinion, is finding the person that can just see it. And then even understand, like, it's funny, I was having a conversation with someone who edited an ad for me today. And one of the things I said is like, okay, the arrow, the red arrow that you have, you have it in a phone template right now. And the background's like busy. The red arrow is not prominent. You want it to come in from off the phone template and it'll jump more. Mm. You know what I mean? And just all mm. these little nuances, nuances that are psychological, that. like it works both ways in theory, but it's, it's the psychological small things. And then just being able to see like, oh, like that clip is fire. And even though the clip progresses like this, if I actually took out like this little piece, even though it's part of it, it'd still make perfect sense. And it actually punches harder. And just all these little things to really just like see the content, not edit it, see it. Mm. Um, and that's, that's what I would say. And like I said, I find, I think you have to just find people that have it. Yeah. It's, it's, I talk to a lot cause there's a lot of like, it's interesting before COVID there was no short form video editors or very few that you could get your hands on. Right. They, now they're everywhere. Now they're everywhere. And they come and they're like, I don't want to be a commodity. And I'm like, are you a video editor? And they're all like, yep. And I'm like, you're a commodity. And then I said, unless you're a storyteller. And that's what I've had a lot of t- talks with Jamie about this on. If you're a storyteller, it's very hard to tell a good, compelling story. Like that's hard to do. And it's not yep. a, com- like, I can't go out. If I said, Hey, here's a thousand bucks, go find me a storyteller. Like that would be difficult to do. And so you, you can go yeah. from commodity to non-commodity very, very quickly in that space. And I, I, I think there's people figuring that out um, still. And uh, I'm trying to figure out, like, I'm figuring it out as well and navigating. I think it's, I think it's a really fascinating um, conversation. 100%. I had a, an interesting moment because I believe in, I think storytelling is actually the thing. If you want to go viral consistently, that's what you rely on is telling compelling stories. Um, and I had a really interesting one because I was telling a story 
that is so specific to like marketers and it did 300,000 views, which is rare for my channel. And the story was basically saying why it's so important to build recognition, recognition on your name, not just your face. Yeah, and I, I tell that. this story. Yeah, exactly. And like it did 300,000 views and I was shocked, but it's because the story in itself is so good that like, if you start listening, whether you care about marketing or not, you want to hear where this is going. Right. And so that's what I think. Uh, one of my friends, Shirag, he does a lot of uh, marketing stuff and he, he tells stories about like, this is what he does. He tells stories about like big brands that everyone knows yeah. and like really fascinating stuff. Yeah. Right. So like the story of Barbie, right. And like why they did this and this and this, and, and like, everyone's like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Like, or like the story of like new Coke, right. If you tell that story, like the classic marketing, um, everyone would be fascinated. Just be like, Oh, I never knew that. You know? Yeah. I think that's, I think that's really cool. And it's a skill set that's so needed and it's hard to do. Like I struggle with that. I can have a conversation, an hour long conversation, but if you're like, Hey, tell a quick, quick, tell a story. It's like, it, it that's harder for me. Um, anything that we didn't cover. Yeah, I, and I think Gary, like oh, one, one of the, one of the things you could look at for your podcast is just like phrasing questions to tell stories in the sense of like, um, maybe you ask a like, background of like, Hey, how did you grow up? What was your, what was your like parents situation? Like, Oh, tell me, tell me like the number one lesson your dad taught you. And like, how do you, that turn, that's a story, right? That has to be a story, right? Or like, tell me like a defining moment that shifted you from like employee to entrepreneur or something like that. And then I don't know, like just looking for ways that it, instead of people just giving direct response, they tell a story. Cause then, you yeah. know, when you post it on your TikTok, it is a higher propensity. That's so good. And you want to know what my weakness is, is I'm so technical, right? So I'm like, I want to get into that mm. technical stuff. You know what I mean? I want to know how fast the business <laughs> I love is it. growing, yeah, yeah. And how many people you're going to need to hire and why. And there's, I, 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 I really love that kind of stuff. And I love it because there's not a lot of it online because most of the content online is like cool. emotional driven because that's what does well. And so I'm always like drawn yep. to that, but you're hundred percent right. Like, I think I, I, I think I could just slow down and just be like, all right, tell me the story of how that yep. happened. And it would, it would absolutely kill. That's really good. Yeah. And I remember talking to a, a client of mine that was a real estate agent. Right. And I was telling them like, okay, if you want to say like, you know, you always get the best deal on your home and you have 24 hours support, right? Like if those are your two pillars that you really rely on to get your customers, don't say that, show it. So be like, you know, last week I was working with Alice and um, what she didn't realize about her home is it was actually located X, Y, Z. And what the other realtors in the area, the other homes didn't, you know, leverage is this. And it's actually typically pushes your home value up 20, 30%. So we marketed that and actually got the highest sale in the thing. And the call came in at 2 a.m. And I, and I, you know, I'm always on. So, you know, and all of a sudden you, you tell them what you want to tell them in a story format and people are compelled to listen to the end, but you're dropping the value props you care about. Mm, that's so good. I love it. This is why I love doing these podcasts. I, last week I, I did one with an agency who does uh, NFTs for businesses that have business application cool. to them. And uh, bro, I learned so much. And today it's no question. I definitely learned a lot and I appreciate all the feedback. Is there anything that we didn't cover? Keeping in mind, a lot of the people that listen to the show are like younger agency owners who are like trying to start and grow their agencies. Any topics or any conversations that we didn't cover? One thing that I've learned as an agency owner is I would rather, um, you know, protect my brand and protect my integrity, then get short-term dollars. Mm. Um, I actually lose a lot of business before it starts because I tell them the truth in the sense of like, look, the odds of this being successful in its current form, um, I don't necessarily believe in it because it's missing this. Could you, you tell don't me a have story? This. Could you tell me a specific story about that happening? For instance, I was working um, with someone and it was like a medical device. Oh, I see what you're doing here with the story stuff. It's very smart. I love it. Learn, I'm a quick love learner. It. That's one thing I'm, I pick up quickly. 100%. So I, I was working with someone um, and they had like a medical device, which for starters is hard to get approved in ads, right? And that's what I started with. It's like, first of all, we could do all this work and like we, can, we don't even get off the ground. So actually what I told them is before I even look at taking on the account, we're just going to try to launch a Google ad. We're going to try to launch a Facebook ad just to see if we can even get it approved. If your landing page will get approved, for instance, right? 
Um, so I did that work before I even signed the deal because I didn't want to waste their money. I didn't want them to pay me and have a negative experience in X, Y, Z. So did that up front, made sure it could get approved. But then they had um, worked with a coach who showed them how to build out their landing page for kind of Facebook and TikTok where like they're going to come to the page, they're going to watch a video and like all this stuff. And I was like, honestly, this specific product, you have to target so finely that TikTok and Facebook, maybe 90% of your spend on a good day is actually going to be spent on people that that don't want your service because you got to tap into three layers deep. It's not just mm -hmm. the top layer that we can target. It's X, Y, Z below it. Right. And so I was like on those channels, you're, you're not really going to have effective spends. Um, but if we go on Google, you're going to be able to, you know, very keyword, you know, you can say only yeah. these specific words have to follow a formula X, Y, Z. And so Google is the place, but since they're coming from Google, they don't have the video beforehand that then it's going to lead them nicely to the landing page. So you're actually going to have to change the landing page in these different ways. And so I'm telling them all the truth because I want it to be successful. And if they don't want to do that work up front, I don't yeah. want to take on the contract because I know what's going to happen. I've seen this before. I've lost deals they're gonna blame and then you. had them refer me business. Yeah. No, no, no. I've lost deals and then had them refer me new clients. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, me, but, if right? you, but if you don't tell the truth. And then you, you bring them on and then you try to walk them through that process and it doesn't work because they're like, no, I don't want to do that video or I don't want to do this or I don't want to rebuild Why didn't you tell me this up front? Yeah. Yep. Right? Exactly. So anyways, just really telling people the truth um, because it works out in the end in the sense of just, just the network effect, right? People talk. You know, the world, the world seems big, but the last thing you want is to then post a TikTok video and have this person comment underneath, this person ripped me off, don't work with them, go write reviews on your... And it's fine, one person, but 10, 20, 30, 40. And all of a sudden you become, you know, a uh, I won't name names, but a scam artist in the industry, right? And it's done because that's your face, yeah, right? It's not, it's not some company logo where you're anonymous behind it, right? Mm, such a good point. Such a good point. Well, this has been really, really good, man. As always, I always learn from you every time. And again, Likewise. this is a fulfillment of a goal of mine. I was like, sooner or later, I'm going to get uh, uh, enough recognition on this platform to be able to talk to Hayden. So I appreciate you coming on, man. You're killing it. I totally support the school. I also, um, I, I know we've talked about this before, but if I can ever drop the link to the school in my Discord community, happy to do that. We got about four or 500 uh, marketers in there and they all have people on their team that need training and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I fully, that. fully support everything that you're doing. And uh, I, I hope, uh, I hope that we continue to cross paths in the future. I know you're going to crush it. 100%, Gary. I was, I was really honored that you invited me onto the podcast as well. I'm a massive fan of yours. Um, and the continued support from you really means a lot to me. Because like I said, I really think you're kind of like the person that I look up to because I know that they've actually done a lot of the things I'm trying to do. So yeah, it's a, it's a huge honor. Bro, you're going to crush it. Your, your trajectory is far beyond my trajectory. And so I'm excited to see what you got, you're going to do. All the people that you're working with, you're, you're spot on. So thanks so much for coming on, man. And I uh, can't wait to drop this one. Appreciate it, Gary. Thank you. Thank you.